You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. And thanks for joining me on yet another great episode, which I hope will be a great episode, of Two Guys and a Lot of Wine. I have actually two guys with me today. One that you may remember from last time, Mr. Eli Ross. I think we did some great Pinot Noir mm -hmm. tasting. And another great friend and great guest, uh, Mr. Jed Benedict from Horse Ridge Cellars in Stafford, who owns a wine storage facility. And we're going to be tasting some really interesting stuff today too, Eli. And Jed, correct? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm, I'm really excited because I've never really done a show on the type of comparison tasting we're doing today. And Jed, you being a uh, professional in wine storage, and Eli, I know both of you sort of collect wine. So I'll be learning today myself. So I'm kind of excited by that. And uh, I'm not even going to attempt to uh, pronounce the two wines that you have, Eli. Uh, <laughs> some of you that we'll, we'll see on camera, the wines that Jed brought in, you might be familiar with the vineyard. Um, it's not the same one from Bottle Shock. It is the same vineyard, actually, right? But it's yes. not, it, that was a Chardonnay uh, that we saw on the show. And we'll start off on today's show just starting very lightly. Stuff that I have in my store, I have about 80 bottles. And, you know, I, it's in a concrete basement that I, stays relatively constant. I don't pay that much attention to it because everything's usually below downstairs in the high 50s to low 60s. So I brought in just a Chateau Bernier, a Bordeaux from, I think, the eastern side mm -hmm. of the river. So, um, that should have been drank, drunk in between 2012 and 2013. It's a little past its prime, so I'm curious to see what you guys think of it. Mm -hmm. And we'll start off with a Charles Lafitte, very dry, nice aperitif, rosé, um, which I really enjoy, actually. This goes great with a lot of stuff. I bought six bottles of those about two years ago and six bottles of the Chateau Bertinier, and I have three of those left, and I drank one about a year ago, which I thought it was pretty good then. I'm curious to see if I'm still going to like it then. So let's start off with the uh, Charles Lafitte Rosé. I don't Cheers. know if anybody's had this one Cheers. yet. It's a moderately priced Brut Rosé. It's dry enough, which is, I tend to like my rosés right. or bubbles dry. And I think it's a good way to start an evening like we're doing tonight, just to uh, give people an idea that even though you don't have to store a bottle like this for long periods of time, if you do, I wouldn't really probably store it longer than a, a year or two down. Yeah. Downstairs. Well, it concentrates a little bit, which some people might like. Mm -hmm. you know, it loses a little bit of that crispiness, and you get a little bit more of the concentrated sugar in it, So, which I'm tasting a little bit here, so it actually is real pleasant. So i got to ask, Jed, um, I know, uh, how long have you been in the business yourself? Personally? I've had the company for 14 years. Started it in 2000, actually, which is the vintage of yeah. the wines we're drinking. <laughs> and i, I got to say, I, we'll, planned. <laughs> we'll probably get into it later, but uh, your wine storage facility is actually a... An old bunker. It's an old uh, storage, document storage facility uh, that the Hartford Insurance Companies built back in the 60s, obviously during the Cold War. So they had documents there for uh, a number of years up through the 90s, um, and then it lay dormant, and then I purchased the property and started it with wine. So. Well, you know what's interesting? Uh, the bunker was built to protect against a nuclear attack, I assume. Correct. So now we have wine that's protected against a nuclear attack. <laughs> Which is ideal for me. You've got to love that. <laughs> <laughs> which is ideal for me. <laughs> Those zombie apocalypse people who love that stuff just know that that's where you go yeah. when the zombie apocalypse comes. <laughs> Absolutely. Go to Jet. Yeah. So uh, the first red that, and we'll get this one out of the way really quick because I'm really anxious to get it to your guys' stuff. Once again, this should have been opened up about a year or so ago. Um, it's a blend. I think it's 40% Cabernet Sauvignon, 60% Merlot. And, well, we'll see. So one of the things you'll see on these, and I don't know if you'll see it on the, our older ones, but if you hold it against your uh, white background, you'll see kind of that bricking right. around the edges, which, which is kind of that thing as the wine ages and, you know, definitely gets kind of 
I wouldn't say this is over the hill, but it's certainly it's drinking now, right? It's yeah. So that, that's my point. Right, so. you nailed it. Yeah, it's, it, it wouldn't wait longer for. It's mm. not going to get any better. My and for our audience, is. this is one of the things we've talked about in the past, so we haven't had to done a show on this. When a wine does get close to being past its prime, what will happen if that kept sitting for another couple of years? It would even get heavier or get... Uh, well, it, it, it tends to lose... What, as wine ages, the fruit softens and the um, earthy tones become more evident. And then if you think of a, you know, fruit and earth, what happens then is the earth overtakes the fruit and then, then you're running into like think of earthy things like old saddle you know tobacco yeah, that it's gets... more of these secondary type of things right. that some people you know certain certain there's certain people that you know all they'll drink especially at the you know in the sort of higher end world of you know stuff that's 50 years old that's like a baby to them but i think the other thing is that you'll notice is that the tannins will soften right that mouth that real grippiness that starts to go away um, but the, the trick with the great wine is that the tannins will soften, but the fruit is still there and then balanced with a little bit of that, that those secondary notes that Jed was talking about. So, so that's ultimately what you're trying to look for in something that's really got some, a long aging profile mm -hmm. is that it allows you to kind of go through all those stages um, for, for many, many years. So. Is there still that cliche that French wines generally tend to have a lot of terroir anyways? There's a lot of earthiness into most French wines? Um, or is that a, a cliche that you just hear people I mean, say? It, they, every region in the world has its unique soils which lend itself to the grapes you know grape vines grow i think like 15 20 feet down into the ground mm -hmm. and they take on all the different layers of soil so i mean there's definitely places in, in napa that have i mean out there all volcanic ash and everything that become very mineral too so um i think it just you know they have cabernet in france they have cabernet in napa and it's just based on the soil type and i think it's the style of wine itself and when they pick and, and mm -hmm. the amount of ripeness that they have so that the the aging profile i mean you know, for an extreme example might be, you know, a really big Aussie Shiraz that might be super great, you know, the first couple of years, but because it's such a fruit-driven wine that, that once that starts to go away, it's just, there isn't much there. It's sort of hiding the other stuff. And in Bordeaux in particular, that's nearly never been, I mean, up until maybe recent years, it's never really been their style. It's been the more subtle um, type of wines. But, but the other thing I want to mention too, and I think I said it last time, is that most wines actually are really not intended to be aged, and most mm -hmm. people don't drink them then you know the most wines that are on the market are you know two or three years and and uh, enjoy so well the reason I wanted to do this show is because so many people now are buying wine and they want to buy a lot of it so most people just throw it in a little wine rack upstairs mm -hmm. either in the living room or in the kitchen and there's not much temperature control there so if you're not storing it properly even if you're going to consume it in a short period of time I would still think the temperature variations drastic temperature variations would still be uh, negative have a negative yeah, really the sudden changes are not good, and the hotter things get, just in general, is not good. Yeah, we were just talking the other night, actually. Yeah. It's been so cold lately, you know, the, the, people get concerned about wine mm -hmm. getting too cold, but that's really, unless the bottle breaks or something. It's frozen. Yeah, right. the, but beyond that, it, and, and the other thing is that it depends on the type of wine. I mean, whites are, as you would expect, are going to be more sensitive to, to poor storage than, than reds. Yeah, that's um, generally, uh, I think most people realize that whites are a little bit, definitely more sensitive to how you store them compared to reds. But um, um, like I said, I, I, these are the type of wines the average person could buy if you're going to store them or drink them. You know, I don't really think that you would need to store these as long as I did. I mean, these have been downstairs for you know seven, eight years. Well, not not the red obviously, but the other one does. But this is an example. It doesn't taste quite as familiar as when I had this about a right. year ago. Which is it's still interesting. And I guess that's the best way to sum it up. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. There are some flavors there. There are some interesting characteristics. It's certainly good enough to serve or drink, but it's lacking something from what I remember about a year mm -hmm. ago. So. Yeah, again, it's all where your palate's at as far as if you're looking for a more of a fruit-driven experience, which is what most, like, hey, wine is a fruit-based beverage, right? That's what most people are, are after. So, But I remember we had the bottle once, what was that, 61 Palmer that Palmer. was like in a crawl space. I mean, talk about weird storage. and. And when he opened that thing, it was like... It was you know, disgusting. It was pretty creepy. We were going to throw it out, and then it all blew off, and it turned yeah. out to be a beautiful bottle of wine. That's but, so that's one lesson for... Yeah, if you ever find an old bottle, don't give up on it right away, because it can kind of... You know, it can come back to life, so to speak, if it's possible. Well, that's what we're going into now. We've gotten two out of the way quickly. Now we're going to go into Jed and Eli's expertise and the comparison for the two different varietals they bought, and we're going to have some fun. So, uh, Eli, since I think you have the first two, okay. uh, go right into uh, talking about them. All right, so the two I brought, uh, so we both, the same idea that, that Jed and I had was basically to take uh, these, in this case, wines, uh, both one from 2000, one from 2010, so uh, 10, 10 years apart. Um, 
The 2010 for Bordeaux is kind of the current release. You might find some 2011s of sort of the mm -hmm. lower end, but but generally um, Bordeaux is three to four years after vintage is when stuff starts to come on the market. So the 2010 uh, was just, I just bought that recently uh, from a retailer. And then the 2000 um, has been at somewhere up in, up, up that I won't name uh, uh, for, <laughs> for uh, no, uh, since about, I guess, 2003 when I got it, it's been, um, uh, in the temperature controlled conditions up there. So yeah, when you say um, up there, you mean at Jed's? Uh, yes. All right. I, just I want to make sure Jed yes. gets his, uh, gets his plug there because yeah. uh, that's part of the fun of the show. Today. Um, and, and, uh, we can talk about it more as we talk through storage mm -hmm. and, and the comparing the different storage approaches. But actually, to be honest, a wine like this, if this had been at my house, I would have drank this a long right. time ago. And that's one of the beautiful things. If you're really trying to set things aside about offsite storage is that, you know, out of sight is out of mind type of thing. Whereas if it's in your house, as you probably know, right, eventually you'll, you know, you, you have, have friends some people over, over right. you have a few drinks, all of a sudden your mind right. says, well, let's sure. open up the good stuff yeah. or let's open up some. Yeah, absolutely. I've been there. So why don't we, uh, yeah, why don't we start the. So this will be the 2010. This is the 2010 first, yeah. So this winery, uh, Chateau d'Aguil, uh, or something like that, is, uh, it's a uh, right bank, which is the eastern part of Bordeaux. Um, I think similar to where your, your red came from. 80% Merlot, 20% uh, uh, Cabernet Franc which is uh, pretty typical for um, that part of Bordeaux. The other, the other side of the river is more Cabernet based. So this is, um, this is gonna be um, more Merlot and uh, um, Cab Franc. Um, so 2000 was a, was a classic vintage in Bordeaux. 2010, I don't think quite as memorable. Which one should we drink first? We're doing the 2010, I'd, does it matter? I would, I would kind of balance them off, you know, take a, get a feel for the aromas on both. I don't think there's any, there's no right or wrong way to do yeah. it really. I mean, tradi not traditionally, but oftentimes the people do tastings, they start with the older ones mm -hmm. because they're softer and then you, know, right. you start with a really big, bold one that kind of ruins your yeah, palate. we'll go that the, route. Yeah. But the 2000 has a uh, beautiful nose on it. Now, what's interesting, and of course, you know, we, I've tried to, uh, you probably can't see this on the camera, the colors mm -hmm. do seem somewhat familiar, even though it's a 10 year, or actually, four, yeah, 10 year difference in the two, uh, two yeah. models. Yeah, and I think the big thing I see on the 2010 that's different is the, the oak treatment, mm -hmm. because you, you get a lot more of that in the younger wine. Um, it's much more, so that is one thing definitely over time that's going to integrate more and be less. And um, you know, I don't think these, these guys, I, can't, I think it's like 10 to 18 months um, aging in new French oak. Um, is what they typically do. So, so I definitely can pick that up on the nose of the, the younger wine. And, it's delicious, and by the way. I should let. Uh, yeah, they're both good. Know. They're both the good. first one in 2000, absolutely spectacular. Yeah. And uh, we haven't talked price points. We started off in the 14, 13 dollar range for the bubbles, um, low 20s on my chateau, or chateau Bernier, Bordeaux, and the price points for these, these are going to be very. Uh, these two are both around 30. 30. Um, at, I mean, the, the 2000 when I got mm -hmm. it was around 30 and. Um, which is interesting because I think it, it, back in 2000, that was probably about as low as you could go on Bordeaux. But now, I mean, even like what you have, and I, I picked up a, a bottle from Stu Leonard's the other day for 20 bucks of Bordeaux. Great, you know, 2009, I think. So, so that's one thing that's definitely changed just in that 14-year period. So. And these are the same at 35-ish dollars, 40 maybe for ours too. But the one thing I notice about the, again, you know, benefits of aging is that you, you think the 2010 is much more tannic than the, yeah. than the 2000? Yeah. I mean that m full mouth feel from the ten, and, yeah. and then in the right two thousand, and then the, yeah, right off the bat, and then in two thousand, um, that's pretty significant. The, it's definitely noticeable. Yeah, and that's one of the things with the, you know when you do this type of thing, aging wine, you soften that out. See, that's what uh, just to let my, my audience know. You know, I have two experts here, in my opinion, mm -hmm. and uh, even though I've been drinking wine a long time, when you're when we're drinking wine like this and we have a comparison, which we don't do quite as often as I would like, two varietals. Uh, big age difference in the wine, mm -hmm. there's a difference. There's definitely a difference in how they taste, how they affect your palate, mm -hmm. uh, right here in the jowls, how it hits you. Absolutely. So, and, and Jen, I gotta ask you, who are some of your clients, um, not names, but like who would use your service? Like uh, just generally people who have a lot that they wanna well, store? The majority of our clients, believe it or not, is uh, are private collectors. And the majority of them have wine storage at their homes. And it's just one of those things where they've run out of space. The wife's told them to. The wife's told them to. And the stuff that they're going to drink now, they, like the 2000 maybe they have at home, and then the 10s and stuff they keep, give to me. And 
which is basically an extension of people's wine cellars. It's just, you know, you run out of space. And, it, and you don't have to have an enormous wine cellar. Some people don't have proper storage. And so they figure, well, I'll keep a couple cases at home. And we offer delivery services, so it's not For like it's too that far are away. Or in apartments yep. or, yep. you know. Yeah. Now, how many bottles can you currently store at <laughs> right, your max? Well, right now we have 37,000 cases of wine in storage. Wow. And we just built a new underground facility similar to these, the old one. And um, we have you know, plenty of ample space to double, triple that amount. So, Well, we'll get into it at the end of the show. But if anybody wants more information or to know a little bit more about your vineyard, you can go right online to uh, Horsewood Cellars and they're in Stafford and find out more. But uh, we'll get into that before the end of the show because... I know, but we might have some viewers here in town that might want to use your facility. I think you might even have, have we, some West we Hartford We do have people. a significant amount of West Hartford uh, clients, and uh, they've been kind enough to invite me into some of the wine groups, too. So <laughs> <That's>, you know, <laughs> It's a great town to live in and drink wine. It is. So. It absolutely is. <laughs> so, i got to say, I'm really quite astounded by the two wines we just tasted and the difference, both in the positive way. Yeah. Uh, the smoothness of the first 2000, though, can't be understated. Oh, I mean, it really is. It's hitting its... Yeah, I think it's, in it's a sweet spot, spot right, right now, now. yeah. yeah. And, and I think, uh, you know, the, these, one of the knocks in, in the wine geek world against the, um, against the Merlot-based Bordeaux is just, they're, they, frankly, that they don't age the same way. They're not the classic, you know, the Lafitte, the Latour, these, these Cabernet-based wines. But, but I think for something at this age, you know, it's, it's really beautiful. Um, definitely, definitely good. So. Yeah, and don't let, once again, you know I love my French wines. Don't let a lot of the terminology, the names of the, the bottles, you know, intimidate you. Do your own research. Do some wine tastings when they have some here in town. They do a lot of French wine tastings. I think a lot of places have regular sure, French absolutely. wine tastings. Um, but please don't be intimidated by anything you hear here because wine shouldn't be intimidating. It should be enjoyable. Except and, 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 well, <laughs> no, okay, yeah, let's, we won't go there. <laughs> but it should be enjoyable and you should enjoy doing it. So. So we, we talked a little bit about storage. I think one of the other things is that, I mean, New England, you do have the option of doing a passive cellar mm -hmm. like you were talking about. Um, and certainly there's some advantages to that. So a lot of people, I mean, even, you know, you can do, uh, uh, people want to entertain or they can, you can, you can make it as elaborate or as, as simple as you want um, in, in doing that, so. Do you do actually any tastings yourself at your facility or is it strictly just a storage facility? Not for clients. Um, we do have a nice hangout place oh, for, right. for the people who work there. Or, the perks or, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Or if Eli comes by, we'll open up some <laughs> bottles of other people's wine. <laughs> <laughs> That's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. And that place has uh, currently uh, been around for 15 years, you said, storing wine? I've had it for, I've started the business. I founded it and it's been 14 years. 14 and years. prior to that, it was documents. And so That's it is underground, which is great. I mean, we have all the heating and cooling, but the fact that it's underground um, lends itself to saving a lot of money. That, with that respect. And Eli, really quick before we get into the next two, uh, these two particular, do you have more of this yourself or are these your only two bottles? Um, I'm asking for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly the 2010 is, is readily available and probably even the 2000 is. So I, I, don't, I, I think I may have drank, I, I only bought a, a couple of those at the time. So, right, so uh, sorry. I won't be raiding your house yeah. anytime soon. Okay. <laughs> but those are available uh, for our viewers if they want to do some research. Yep. That particular vintage is still available if you uh, want. Yeah, both of them are. I mean, yeah. the 2010 is, is the one that's current release. So, um. Well, i got to say thumbs up to the, both those two. Yeah. Uh, not only because of their, their interesting taste, but because the comparison was so profound. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how, we'll, how it'll shake out on the, the Cabernets. I am too, so. yeah. Um. Well, actually, Jed didn't drink his wine fast enough. All right, well, we'll start down with yeah, you. We'll start down <laughs> I'm savoring. Yeah. Um, as we mentioned before, I brought two bottles of the uh, Montalena Cabernet from Napa. And uh, if those of you who aren't familiar with Montalena, they're, they're an established old, you know, going back to 1882 vineyard. Um, they're one of the first founding vineyards in California, and they've been making wine ever since. Um, they're well known in one of the movies, uh, Bottle Shock, if you've seen the movie before. We, yes, we have talked yeah, about that yeah, movie yeah, several yeah, times, yeah. actually. And I, I mean, we didn't plan it this way, but yeah, the Bordeaux versus uh, California. Yes, yeah, we're not revisiting, revisiting the movie. <laughs> right. I just thought of that, right, yeah. It's 2000. In fact, the Montalena that was the one that won was, uh, was actually a Chardonnay, right? It was a Chardonnay, yeah. yeah. And these are more Cabernet-based blends than the ones that Eli brought, these, um, the 10 is about 90% cab and 10% Merlot, and the 2000 is about 75, 25. Okay. And are we doing it uh, either one first, does it matter? 
2010 maybe, or the year? Um, I kind of bounce back and forth yeah. on it a little just, bit, see. I kind of just check in on the nose first. and I'll make sure I get these in. right, so this yeah. was the 2010. Oh yeah, that, that, that happens at tastings. <laughs> <laughs> or someone will drink the same wine twice, yeah, that's happened too. Now 2000 in Napa, was not nearly as historic as 2000 in Bordeaux. Bordeaux 2000 was considered one of the best vintages in the century at the time. The 2000 in Napa was really challenging um, for everyone out there. So of course, it's like kind of like a going out of business sale now, right? And because of I don't, you can blame whatever you want, whether you believe in global warming or whatever. But the the vintages of right. the century are a lot more uh, common now than they used to be all over the place. And, um, yeah, definitely. It, it, it's funny. It is. It's almost eerie. It's like just like the last two. There is a big. There's certainly a big difference. Well, you know, you got uh, yeah. to wonder is it, when you say vineyards of the century, it's because there are more people growing wine in different locations, so there's actually more grapes. I well, mean, it's the the with global warming. There's the ideal growing conditions is just hot well, and dry. And, I, and the other mm. thing is, uh, I think the winemaking is just so much better than it used to be. I mean, the, the guy, the guy that not the guy that owns the Doug Eel, but the winemaker is like, and he's one of many people that do this. They travel the whole world, right. go to you know Chile, Aust Australia whomever, and they just, you know, they bop in, you know, great job, right? They, they tell the people what to, how, to, what, how to ferment the wine, what to do with it, and, and so I think that has a lot to do with it as well. Just the quality level is so much higher than it was even 10, 15 years ago. Well, i got to say, Jed, similar to Eli's, uh, the older, I haven't tasted the uh, newer one, but the 2000 still is very smooth. Yeah, and um, it would, it, it, this is similar to this too, the 10, you'll find out probably is this super tannic, like that you yeah. get that full mouth tannin again, and that's, one of the benefits of aging, that's why you do age wine, of, among other things, is that you want to drop a lot of that tannin. I mean, to drink this by itself would be pretty difficult without mm -hmm. having like a big steak to say, a, yeah, yeah, need some a company of it. Meat to go exactly. Whatever. And by the way, when I say smooth, or we, we use those kind of general terminologies, uh, there's still a lot of flavor here. I mean, you get mm -hmm. a, there's mm -hmm. a large flavor profile in this wine. Um, so by saying smooth, I don't want people to be misconstrued that. You know, there's like a one note wonder there. Right, right, right. There's no, no. a lot of character variance in this particular but wine. But I think when you have a heavy, uh, heavy tannic uh, structure, which I'm about to try here, it over, it kinda, yeah, it overpowers kinda it. Mutes it. All yeah. of that, and so. everyone who's had wine, you know what we're talking about when you drink it and you just get that full mouth coating in your mouth mm -hmm. of just not fruit, it just, you know, masks the flavor mm -hmm. a little bit more. But Which is why, in general, when you're drinking a wine like that, you want to pair it with something that's going to accompany take care of mm -hmm. that aspect mm -hmm. of your mouth. You don't really want to drink a wine like that just sitting having a conversation with friends without having some type Correct. of food group you got it. in front of you. And I, I heard from someone a long, long time ago, it was a great thing I always remembered that pair the weight of the wine with the weight of the food. I love that. And yeah. so you know, basically phenomenal. a big, big cab, get a big, big steak. If you have a peanut light Pinot Noir, you get a light type of food, a chicken or a salmon, salmon or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. So. Jed, after four years of doing the show, you just came up with a great Catch line. Weight of the food, you. weight of the wine. That's I all can't you need believe to do. even Jim's never thought of that one before. That's phenomenal. Or when you have uh, what Jordan, right? Yeah, Jordan even never said that one either. Yeah, that's, no, that's uh, that stuck with me forever. If if you're ever in question about, you can do another show about pairing wine and food, but that's as old standby me for me. It just okay. Well, and I think even that that is even more true than the whole red wine and you know and white meat yeah, or yeah, exactly yeah, that whole yeah, thing. Because yeah. yeah, that's very good. Yeah, no, I think the. Um, Definitely get a lot more of the oak on the 2010, as, as Again, I'd expect, yeah, just yeah. like with the, the Bordeaux. So these are, every wine, I believe here, even mine, except for the bubbles, are these all oak stored or oak? Yeah, um, it's tr yeah some kind of uh, it, um, fermentation or, or aging in oak, yeah. yeah. It's pretty, I mean, it's, I guess there probably are some reds that don't, that get a, like a stainless or or a concrete barrel type thing, but. But they're terrible. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, and I think in some ways the, the oak kind of, or the wood sort of sets it up for this yeah. aging curve that we were talking about in a way. I mean, it kind of complements it and, and softens along with everything else. So. so how long has it been since either one of you done a, a wine tasting like this where you're comparing such uh, a wine? Week, no. <laughs> just like, well, of course. It's well, vintage like this, I, I mean, I can't remember the last time I went with that, this theme, mm -hmm. which I, I enjoy thoroughly, you know, just... Right. Yeah, more common is to do, like, I mean, we just did a tasting recently where it was all, you know, all 20, 2009s from one producer, for example. That's more common just to do, like, a, a, a horizontal as opposed, this is kind of a mixed vertical of, you know, different, uh, different wineries, different years. Yeah, and, and you're so. not comparing these because it's apples and oranges right. based on vintage and stuff like that, right. too. There is a certain common 
characteristic though to all the wines we've had tonight, and that's that, at least in my opinion, because some of these are French, obviously some of these are Napa, but once again, I love the characteristic of the soil. I think you get mm -hmm. that in a lot of these wines. Mm -hmm. You definitely, as you become more prone to be an expert at wine tasting, you really taste that mm -hmm. aspect. Absolutely, of it. I agree with you 100%. The Bordeaux distinctly different, even though they're the same grape, but different styles. So, so in our remaining few minutes, uh, Jed, I wanted to ask you if uh, you know, is there anything you wanted to share about your facility, or like anything that's coming up, or um, do you have anything planned? Or like, how do you guys, well, advertise, do you guys advertise? Well, you, interesting, we just finished an addition we talked about earlier. We finished a new 14,000 square foot underground, same thing, bomb shelter addition, um, which we're excited, and we just finished it up. And as far as advertising, believe it or not, we don't. We don't advertise very much. It's the wine word communities. Of mouth? Word of mouth, yeah. Website. That's, That's the best yeah, way, yeah. yeah. Our website, of course. Um, but yeah, and we're excited about the getting out of the cold and getting into the spring and yeah, you should also mention that you do do a lot of deliveries and, and people, clients. That oh, have sure. Stuff, yeah, you know, yeah, picked yeah, up yeah. as well. So yeah, once again, don't hesitate. I mean, I, as you know, we have a, a Facebook page, two guys, and a lot of wine. I'll have Jed's information. I'll have the information on every wine we've had tonight up on the web page so you can experiment with, you know, and do the same thing we did here tonight, which is always a lot of fun. Absolutely. Sure. <laughs> and Eli, anything new on your horizons for uh, anything you're looking to buy anything? Uh, no, no, I'm just enjoying, enjoying these wines and, uh, yeah. properly stored wines. That's right. <laughs> well, how, 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 quickly, how do you, how do you find something that, what's, how do you find something that you want to buy? You just shop around or look uh, at wine? I think you, yeah, you drink a lot of wine, you find what you like. And, and, uh, you know, for me personally, I bounced around from, you know, Cabernet to Bordeaux. Now I'm kind of getting more into Italian wines. So it's, it's just a matter of experience. Well, I want to thank both my guests, both Jed and Eli for joining me today. I, I'm, I hope you guys learned something. I know I did. And check us out at Two Guys a lot, of, a lot of Wine, our Facebook page, whtv.org on demand. Check out Jed. And until next time, keep all of us in your wine cellar. <laughs> <laughs>